Jura Houston, Apollo 10, you can tell the world that we have arrived. I see a uh, view 10. Charlie, it might sound corny, but the view is really out of this world. For the second time, three Americans orbited the moon. The electronic sensors of Miss Spin, the manned spaceflight network, followed their flight, measuring precisely their orbital path. Information vital to the success of the first manned landing. On the first orbit, the crew turned the TV camera on the scarred lunar landscape. See the Sea of Crisis up here? That's the first real thing I'm positive of that I've seen that I recognize. And boy, it really uh, stands out. Stafford Young Cernan, a quarter of a million miles from Earth, 60 miles above our desolate satellite. Boy, that's, this is really a rugged planet. But also looking out at the horizon of some of the mountains we can see down here, that's gonna be a real kick tomorrow down at 50,000 feet, over. Uh, we copy that. Hello, Houston Apollo 10. We've got a beautiful view of the Earth here, but it's absolutely fantastic. Now it was time for Lunar Module pilot Gene Cernan to crawl into the Lunar Module called Snoopy to check it out for the next day's descent. His evaluation? And I personally am very happy with the fella and I hope we can give you as good a report tomorrow. Yeah, you bet your life. Yeah, you watch Snoopy well tonight and uh, make him sleep good and we'll take him out for a walk and let him stretch his legs in the morning. Oh, okay. The next day, Stafford and Cernan were in the lunar module. John Young in the command module called Charlie Brown. They checked out Snoopy for the last time. One of the items involved venting the tunnel connecting Snoopy and Charlie Brown to make sure that the spacecraft hatches did not leak. This was a real problem. The vent pipe seemed to be clogged. However, the hatch integrity was checked by reducing the pressure in the lunar module. The inability to reduce pressure in the tunnel also caused a three and one half degree rotation between the two spacecraft. Not enough to endanger undocking, but for Apollo 11, it would be fixed. Okay, Charlie Brown and Snoop, uh, three minutes uh, going over the hill. you go for undocking, and we'll see you around the other side. Roger. Roger. The undocking took place behind the moon. When contact was reestablished, Snoopy and Charlie Brown were ready for the separation maneuver prior to descent. The word from John Young and Charlie Brown was... You'll never know how big this thing gets when there ain't nobody in here but one guy. You'll never know how small it looks when you're as far away as we are. Hey, John, if you get a chance, you can turn on the radar transponder and we'll correlate the VHF range with it. Okay, my transponder is on. Transponder is on and the test switch is in operate. I should be getting a radar signal here and I sure don't. An electronic piece of radar equipment in the command module was not functioning. Without it, there would be no rendezvous and no low orbit descent in the lunar module to the moon. In mission control and in the two spacecraft, switch positions and procedures were rechecked for the descent and subsequent rendezvous were the heart of the Apollo 10 mission. From mission control, one last ditch instruction was sent up. Uh, Roger, uh, re how about trying to recycle the uh, power switch, uh, Charlie Brown? 
In the command module, Young turned the switch off, then on again. Hey, that did it, you guys. It's on. Hey, and I got signal strength, old buddy. What do you know about that? A little thing, a stuck switch. But for Apollo 11, it would be corrected. Okay, Jose, say adios, and we'll see you back in about six hours. Gosh. Have a good time while we're gone, babe. Yeah, don't get lonesome out there, John. And don't accept any TEI update. Houston, uh, 45 seconds to uh, LOS. Uh, you're still go uh, for DOI. DOI, Descent Orbit Insertion, would come about 180 degrees from landing site 2, the primary site for Apollo 11. According to the inexorable laws of celestial mechanics, this burn of the lunar module descent engine would put Stafford, Cernan, and Snoopy less than 10 miles above the site. Once more in mission control, they waited for word from the moon. Houston, Houston, Charlie Brown. They're down there among the rocks, mumbling about the boulders and things right now. Eight miles above the surface, 35,000 feet over the ancient hills. Then a communications problem. Contact with Snoopy was reestablished through Charlie Brown. Hello, Houston, Houston, this is Snoopy. Right, Snoop, go ahead. We is going, we is down among them, Charlie. Roger, I hear you weaving your way up the freeway. Uh... Roger, fantastic, Charlie, fantastic. Roger. Charlie, babe, it's fantastic, babe, really. Then, one of the key aspects of the mission, Tom Stafford describes the landing site selected for Apollo 11. Yeah, okay, the approach in looks a lot smoother than some of the orbiter photos show. It still has to make 25 to 30 percent a semi-clear area, so if uh, the limb has enough hover time, at least from what we can see at 50,000 feet, it should not be a problem. Or if you come down in the wrong area and you don't have the hover time, you're going to have to shove off. Now it was time to begin the rendezvous. On this first low orbit, they would make the initial burn to put Snoopy and Charlie Brown into the proper phase relationship for the coming maneuvers. Okay, we're burning, John. We're burning. Snoopy was now ready for the rendezvous sequence to be performed on the next orbit. Once more, they rounded the battered face of the moon. Oh, Charlie, we just saw Earth rise, and it's got to be magnificent. Charlie, I don't know how the big man must see things, but if his view is any better than ours, uh, it's got to be fantastic. Before the actual rendezvous burns took place, the lunar module's ascent stage would have to be separated from the descent stage. 